Today's world is filled with opportunities to serve customers better, and using technology gives you a way to do that. Adam Toporek is joining me today. He's an expert on this. Adam, thanks for being here. So happy to be here. Thank you. I'm really fascinated with what you've been doing with your uh, podcast, with your books. As a matter of fact, we've got to show the kids here your book, Be Your Customer's Hero. This is the book that he wrote. I'm going to move my hand so you can see it even better that way. There it is. Great book, and I'm looking forward to getting into it myself and doing that. But you talk about serving customers and really helping them. There's ways we can do that with technology today. I was wondering if you could uh, share with us some ideas that work and some new technologies that work uh, coupled with the important attitudes and ways and philosophies that you talk about. What have you seen working? Oh, absolutely. Well, one of the things technology allows us to do is to connect more frequently cheaply, which companies love, right? Being able to scale that frequency. Now, you can't connect as deeply with technology, but you can connect more frequently and you can over-communicate. That's been a thing we've been teaching in customer, ser customer service since before technology was even a big part of it, was over-communicate, stay in touch. So you've got things like alerts. Think about what an airline can do now to tell you about your flight. And you've got so many third-party apps which are assisting the customer experience. I don't know, I know you travel a lot. You use a, I found an app called TripIt. Yeah. which is an amazing app and that actually provides you know service through a third party and it uh, keeps you in touch with what's going on. Yeah, so, I think it's really good because I can use those and they're helping me to not only know oh my flight is delayed or it's going to be at this gate etc but also hey here's uh, in this airport there's a Japanese sushi shop here that right. you might like sushi we know and so it's available. Those kind of technologies really help us. Right and I love the marketplace for that because you've got to think the airlines have to allow an app like that that's part of their service model they have to allow them access to the database. They have to allow them to have that information. So when you look at what, let's say airlines are doing, so they're doing that on their own. You can sign up when you sign up for the ticket to get alerts, to know when your gate's been changed, to know when your flight's been delayed. Okay, and look at what Zappos, Amazon, anybody that's doing really good online customer service and commerce, you get consistent updates about your stuff. Yeah, everything is about communicating, using technologies, communicate. Now, the other thing you can use uh, technology to do is personalize. Tell me about that, because that seems that's really important today. I don't want just a mass email that goes out, because we all got that a lot. But I want something that's really uh, targeted toward me without invading my privacy. How do we do that? Uh, we'll give up on the privacy part. That's that's gone. <laughs> that's Maybe if I choose to give up yeah. certain elements to say, I choose to let you contact me. Okay, that's a different thing. I'm opting in. Right, correct. I mean, privacy is a big concern with it because there is so much power now to personalize and customize. And there have been a lot of horror stories about companies going too far and using what's called big data. I mean, they can... You know, there's an example of possibly going too far. We talked about on our podcast recently that uh, there's some startup companies investing in actually looking at your phone records and being able to determine if you're a good loan. Okay, just by the... Sounds like the NSA, the National Security Agency, not the National Speakers Association. They were the agency that does the listening, not the talking. That's it. Those people, but really, they've been listening too much, and we go, hey, wait a minute, they don't have a right to do that. Well, yeah, so they can actually use uh, their finding that there are algorithms. They can use that data to say, okay, even how often you charge your phone is an indication of how well, how likely you are to repay your loan. So there's some sort of scary avenues that this personalization can be done, but that power can also be used for good, not just evil. How can we use it for good? Okay. So, for instance, I can, I mean, you know, the sort of old example is knowing when your birthday is, but knowing what your thing is. So when you shop on Amazon, you always get, hey, people like who like this also recommended this, or based on your purchasing habits, or based on what you have looked at recently, we recommend this, right? That's the great part of personalization and using data. Is you yeah, I kind of like that. I see there's, there's a camera that's coming out in a few days from Panasonic. And I'm looking at it going, ooh, this is a really nice camcorder. I get they keep giving me those ads, but I'm going, okay, maybe I will. I like that, but I've opted in for it. Right. And Netflix is brilliant. So what Netflix actually is doing is looking at everybody's buying behavior not to just do individual, but to actually decide what shows to create. And, you know, they came up pretty much, they were the pioneers in the idea of binge watching, of releasing an entire season because they found out by looking at that data what people really wanted and that people would save up and watch five episodes at a time or a whole season at a time. And now that's how, that's actually Netflix's, you know, entertainment model. Yeah, you didn't hear much about binge watching before. I remember sometimes I would go and get uh, several DVDs on a season like 24 
remember Keith or Sullivan, and I get that because I don't have TV, so I, w I don't wouldn't do it. But I'd catch the whole season and be able to watch that. Well, now it's like it's nice that uh, Gene and I, for instance, will watch uh, House of Cards, and I like the binge watching because for me it becomes an experience. You in immerse yourself into that whole series. You get into oh, how are they going to get out of this one, etc. But Netflix serves us and it makes it worth our while to pay that X dollars a month that we do every month to keep their service. Exactly, and they've used that data, you know, to inform their product line as well as to, you know, they have that recommendation engine, just like we talked about with Amazon, where when you're clicking and you watch House of Cards, it's going to recommend for other shows that are similar to House of Cards, or it thinks you will like based on everybody's everybody else who's watched House of Cards and what they've watched, right? So they're gonna, it's gonna personalize it for you. So that's the way that data and technology is creating incredibly rich, detailed, customized customer experiences. And you know, the other thing with House of Cards and the binge watching, it's interesting, part of that is just being part of this internet instant gratification era. You know, when we hit that cliffhanger at the end of the episode, we don't wanna wait. How are they going to get out of this one? I don't know. Okay, well, we see what Netflix is doing. We see what other larger companies. A lot of people watching this are going to be uh, in service business. They're serving people. I know you've had a background in accounting. You've worked, you got your MBA, and you've been able to look at how companies do it. How would a small company, how would a service business be able to use some of the technologies like that to better serve their customers? And this is the, I love this question because this is the golden age of small businesses being able to compete with large businesses. And you just need to know one phrase, service is a software. There are so many CRM systems and different you know, social media management systems out there that are affordable for small business. Uh, you know, I, have a, I had a small business where I used a product from 37 Signals. Uh, they changed it to Basecamp called High Rise. And it was a simple CRM. It was like 49 bucks a month. And I was able to run an incredibly rich customer experience program for, you know, 50 bucks a month, a dinner a month. And, uh, and tell us again, where do they get that? If they, somebody says, hey, I want to check that out. Uh, that's, it's called High Rise HQ. H I G H or H I H I G H, and it's a uh, use. It's uh, made by the company called Basecamp now, which makes Basecamp. They were called Thirty Seven Signals previously, but it's a great simple CRM, and they're a simple software. There's lots of rich. You know, everybody knows Salesforce. That's a rich CRM, but and that's a little more expensive. But there's so many affordable solutions where small businesses can now do this. I mean, there's so, because it's all digital. You don't have to have somebody come in and install those back in our day. We won't go too far back, but you know, you had to have a programmer come in and install it on your system. Them. Now it's all digital. It's all in the cloud. It's all services of software, and you can pay monthly membership fees, you know, or, you know, monthly fees, basically just to have these services. And so there's so many rich things out there. Salesforce is one. Um, I like something called Active Campaign, which is something that uses drips. You know, so if somebody signs up for your list, or you sell a digital product, you know, you can send them a series of emails. And there's a ton of other competitors. So you're there in a pleasantly persistent way. Very important. This is all part of relationship marketing. I talk a lot about that. Those of you that that know my material, know I talk about our commerce. It's not about the e-commerce, the electronics. It's about the our commerce relationships. And I wrote the book on that and then talk about it. But I think it ties in with what you're saying, that we can do that. How do we make that happen? Oh, the relationships? Yeah, the relationships and this technology. How do we implement that? What have you seen that works? I'd say two ways. One is trying to use the technology to customize for the person, because like you said, I don't want the same email everybody gets. I don't want the, you're gonna get some, but you, you want other emails. You want emails that are customized to you. So, you know, for instance, Active Campaign, you know, you can get so granular with that, you can actually say, well, if they click on this link, they're gonna get a whole series of emails, and if they click on this link, they're gonna get a whole different series of emails based on their preferences. Now, to me, technology is a beginning to an end. When you talk about relationships, Okay, technology, we relate to human beings, okay? We relate to, we are, ev our evolution has not kept up with our technologically <laughs> technological evolution. So we still respond to faces. We still respond to sound of voice. We still respond to body language. And every time you take away one of those signals, you take away some of the depth of communication. You make it less. You make it a less deep connection, and you also make it more open to misinterpretation. So I think whenever you can get face to face, it depends on your model. Some models just aren't designed for that. But if you can do a Skype video, if you can send somebody a video, which you sent me a video very early when we met, it was very, it was very interesting. It was very smart. You know, didn't just send me an email. Hey, great to meet you. You sent me a little video, and it was amazing. Yeah, video is a much more natural way of doing uh, communication, staying in touch with you. Right now, you and I are seeing each other. We're sitting here uh, near a Starbucks here. My 
my my Starbucks here in Orlando. I don't own it, but I consider it mine. But we're right here, and we can see each other. And I think that's where video is a really good tool for connecting. Those of you watching this, think about it. There's tools out there, like I use iJot. I think it was the one I used for you, but uh, YouTube, and there are a host of others that are really good. Find the one that works right for you and use that to connect with people, doing better customer service, and really being there for people using the technology. 100%, yeah. It's, it, anything you can do to strip away the digital divide, you know, and to create those layers, tone of what you know, I always say, you know, email's better than social, phone's better than email. Face, video is better than phone and face to face is better than you know, all of it and that's true now it all depends on what you're doing that's very context dependent you don't you know so, so there's a lot to be said for social media we were just talking about our buddy just released a great book hug your haters about all about social interaction social customer service and it's very important because you know if i just give you a tweet i just want an answer to my tweet that's it's the appropriate communication for the time. I mean, if you and I are going to meet somewhere, I often use this example, and we're going to be here a little bit late, to send you a quick text, hey, running late, should be there by 6.15. That's okay. You don't need a full-blown video explaining the data, showing the cars that are there, showing the accident. It, no, oh, too much information, Terry. Let's keep it short and make it appropriate. Well, to your point, yeah, it's all the comedian. Uh, it's all the appropriate medium for what you're doing because, you know, I, that's what text is for for me. Like, hey, I'm running late. I, I I hate when people send me a text like, so how have you been lately? I'm not going to answer that on text. What are your thoughts on the fall of the Roman Empire? <laughs> With Mr. Gibbons, Edwin Gibbons, he wrote the book. <laughs> right, so it, 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 it matters for our commercial lives as well and for our business lives as well. It's still you want to find the appropriate medium. But whenever you have the opportunity to connect on a deeper level, you know, if you have a customer who's mostly social or mostly digital, you know, if you can pick up the phone once in a while and say hi, or if you can connect in a deeper way, always try to do it. It would seem also in getting to know customers that knowing what they like, some people prefer audio means, some prefer video, some a visual aspect, some prefer more of a kinesthetic, these modalities we talk about within uh, psychology. But if you can identify that and learn that this person is more audible, they tend to be more audible or oriented, well then sending them a nice MP3 audio could be appropriate. It seems like it might be good. What do you think? No, absolutely. And the more you can know, the more you can customize, right? I mean, that's been the game since before we had CR and databases. That's when we were writing down our, you know, in sales and writing down on index cards what our clients liked, right? I mean, for the cavemen, they used index cards, didn't they? I, I don't know. We're doing it with the, the chisel and the <laughs> tablets. Yeah, I mean, but that has always been the game. We just now we have the tools to make it easier. But also, part of it being easier means it's more competitive. Yeah. Others are doing it, so you got to step up your game. Exactly. It's like, okay, I want to use this. I don't want anybody else doing it. Just me. You know, but no, that's now everyone's got it. It's kind of like with a podcast, and you've got a good podcast. If you haven't checked out his podcast, you want to do that. Listen to it with Jeannie Walters, I believe. Jeannie, my buddy Jeannie Walters, yes. And so the two of you. Code. Crack the customer code. Look that up. I've been listening to it and enjoying what you've done there. Really good information. I love your freestyle back and forth that you two have. It's very conversational and packed with a lot of gems all the way through. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, we have fun. We have fun. We banter. It's also, we're good friends. And yeah, it's a great, it's a great time. And we do talk talk a lot about customer experience and customer service and we have great guests and we're hoping to have you soon and yep that. that'll be good well so if someone says hey I want to know more about this I want to know about how to be your customers hero here's the shameless plug for the book and get in there I'm looking forward to reading it myself and uh, having that but if someone says hey they want to get in touch with they want to find out more about Adam they want to find out this guy by the way I got to let you know he really is good we just had some marvelous discussions about ideas and concepts he's a thinker he is a person you want on your court you want working with you and for you get to know his stuff he's got a lot of good out there lap it up you know find out what's there how do they get to uh, how do they commence to lapping up your material well, first of all thank you so much and i feel the same way about you it was an amazing discussion we had prior to this and this uh customers at stick.com so you have be your customers hero.com but my home base is customers at stick.com say that real slowly for those that might not have english as their first language customers that stick.com and you can also just Google me and you will find me. I'm all over the internet, Adam Toporek. But yeah, uh, spell Toporek, please. Uh, T O P O R E K. <laughs> uh, yeah, so any, anyway, and I'm easily connectable. I'm on social. You can find me. I love to connect with new people, and thank you so much for having me. Adam, it's so good to have you here. Really appreciate it. Get in touch with this guy. Do yourself a favor. You will enjoy it as you find out his material, what he's doing, and how you can use that in your own business to reach your customers. I'm Terry Brock with terrybrock.com. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you.